Hey, pleasant good day, everybody. This is Sportsman News. I'm Joe Brooklyn. This is going to be the next edition and the first edition of the Bell Take as we got a name finally for the Phillies podcast again. As we're going to get into it, please continue to subscribe down below to keep us growing to the goal of 250 or more by the start of June. Well, let's get into it. The Phillies have won six of their last 10, and I believe seven of their last 11. My math is correct in my head, and they won back-to-back series against the Dodgers and against the Mariners before their offense depleted in the first game of the series to lose two or three to nothing, but then answer back and win by that same score in a fantastic game pitched by Zach Attack Wheeler, where it was great to see the Phillies because it's not like they were playing that good coming into the Western Road Trip. They lost a series to the Mets, got swept in a two-gamer by the Rangers, and then lost another series to the Mets. So they were going into playing the struggling Seattle Mariners and were able to take advantage of them, which is an A in my in my book because you're coming off of kind of sucking yourself, so you're both coming in struggling. And after <clears throat> the Mariners actually had more success before their struggle than the Phillies did, and the Phillies went in and were able to take care of business in that series. And then to go in and beat the Dodgers in the first three, yes, the fourth game sucked. That game I was pissed about as much as everybody else probably with blowing the lead and all that yada, 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 yada. But the first three, you were able to take advantage of the almighty Dodgers and win. That was huge. Now you're playing the Padres, who are hot as well. Not able to get anything going in the first game. But then in the second game, you're able to get key hits, of course, the home run uh, by Reese Hoskins, the single by JT Real Muto, and the double by Odubel Herrera. And by the way, on the topic of the outfield, before we just review all the Phillies that are just doing spectacular this season and guys that we think need to pick it up a little bit more as I do in all these uh, videos that are now going to be called the Bell Take. But when it comes to the outfield, Mickey Moniak is starting a rehab assignment tomorrow, so he's going to get to be coming back up soon as well because Bryce won't be playing the outfield until August. But somebody we have to shout out just how good he's been able to hit. Obviously, Alec Bohm, uh, who also, other than his fielding mishap today, but JT made up with it with the play of the day on that beautiful throw to third base, actually has been fielding better as well, including when he's been shifted to the second base side. Castellanos has been spectacular. Bryce at the dish started getting really hot. That's why it was a shame he needed that injection when he did, but you got to do what you got to do, right? And it was nice to see Reese hit a homer because he started getting going some out west in the leadoff spot, and then started looking cold a little bit in the final two games. So it was nice to see him smack that homer out in the leadoff spot as well. Obviously not your prototypical leadoff hitter. JT, somebody that started going cold at the dish. Obviously we'd like to see him get going again. Same goes with Kyle Schwarber. We would like to see him obviously get going. Odubel did hit a double tonight, so you would hope that propels him. Didi Gregorius, we would hope, is back soon from his injury as well because he was actually hitting really well. But when it comes for the Phillies, my surprise player that I have to shout out just for how good he's actually been. He's the backup catcher, but what he's actually stepped up big time. Doesn't smoke the ball, but gets hits and fields it really well behind the dish. I would have to say Garrett Stubbs has been a very nice backup pickup this far, and Johan Camargo is bench pickups. Have been very good bench pickups because that's something the Phillies have struggled with in recent years, having anybody on the bench that really you would consider a guy that actually was a great pickup or something like that. Like Yes, you had Roto, but Roto isn't to the level of a Camargo or even to if um, Stubbs can hit, he's not going to hit 350 obviously, but if he can hit 255 or 250 and be that guy that can steal bases because we have two of the fastest catchers in the league, well, that's helpful. But I think this team, as long as Castellanos and Segura and Boom, you can have those three continue to just hit, hit, and hit. You just got to have the Hoskins and Schwarbers pick it up more consistency around them. Obviously, you have Bryce that's going to come back and start hitting again, and then you have to hope Didi is able to come back and start hitting again to get right into your lineup because Scott has been picking the position really well and I think fielding the position well. At the plate, he's put together some professional at-bats, but he just isn't fully catching up to major league pitching yet. So when Didi comes back, it'll be interesting to see if he kind of has that Segura effect of taking a week or so to get back into it. But then hopefully, if he once he gets back into it, he can have the Segura effect of being spot on and bowler like Gene Segura has been lately. But <clears throat> when it comes to the pitching, my biggest thing for the Phillies is it's been nice to see Eflin and Suarez and Gibson and Wheeler and all those guys in the recent starts have very good outings, and it seems like they're starting to get more into a groove and be able to find it as well as Aaron Nola and be able to find their stuff a little bit more to kind of pitch the corners and to be able to go east, west, north, south and not have to rely on their movement as much, which is obviously you want to be able to rely on as well, but 
before that the, they were missing spots, had to rely on kind of just completely fooling the hitters, where that's why we were having a lot more walks by our staff earlier, where now it seems like they're starting to find their full command more. So that's going to be huge for the Phillies. I would like to see Yuri's Familia get a lot sharper. James Norwood had a good start to the year and then has been poor since, other than his most recent outing. Hand's been good. Alvarado's been very topsy-turvy. Sometimes he's had those good outings where he's looked sharp, and then most of the time this year, not very Brino. Uh, Andrew Bellotti got his first win the other day. That was nice to see because Andrew Bellotti did deserve that spot on. He's been very good this season. He's been the step-up guy of the season. And then when he's been up, Connor Brogdon's also been up and down. But I'm just happy with how the starting rotation's done. I also have to shout out Nick Nelson for being a guy that can just pick up innings. I thought Sir Anthony has looked good since coming back as well. I would say the disappointing guy in the bullpen has been Yuri's Familia and Jose Alvarado. I would like to see those two get going. The disappointing guys in the lineup have been obviously Kyle Schwarber this far. And then I would say in recency it would be Real Muto, and then Reese Hoskins as well. You want to just see kind of fully kind of put it together. But I wouldn't put him in the disappointing category. He started to put it together on the road, went cold for a couple games, and then hit us homer tonight. But those would be the kind of ways that I look at things. This has been the latest edition of the Bell Take as we talk about. The Phillies recently kind of starting to find their ways a little bit, but still not fully yet because they could have still found a way to kind of push together more runs today. They got great pitching performances. I was able to win it for them. They were able to find the offense more out west. They didn't find it the first game against the Padres or the last game against the Dodgers, and they found it enough in this game with three runs that was more the pitching that won it for them. So we'll see what happens going forward and if they can kind of fully find that offense and everybody can be consistent at one time because that's going to be the bread and butter for this team. Peace out, everybody. Stay safe. Please subscribe down below or above in the easy to use widget to keep us growing to the goal of 250 or more by the start of June.